Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So we are back here with another top champion ranking video. We are making our way through them steadily day by day. We already have done a whole bunch. So we did 2022 champions ranked, 2021 champions in two videos, then all MCOC classes ranked. So far we have gone through mystic, tech and skill classes. Now we have science, cosmic and mutant, and it is quite visibly getting harder and harder to fit all the champions in these top 10 positions especially for these classes that have so many amazing champions and it is going to be even harder to take the top mcoc champions list and make it work and make it make sense obviously these are just my own opinions i do try to put my personal bias away as much as possible i do take a look at what currently in the game is you know most used in the top tiers of the gameplay i do trying to figure out what changes have happened since my last rankings video as we can see here that my old science champion top 10 six months ago was human torch captain american infinity war mr fantastic spider-man 2099 mr negative void i hulk miles immortal abomination and the thing and obviously there will be some change to rankings few champions will not appear on this list anymore there are few newcomers and still no matter how much I tried, I'm kind of heartbroken <laughs> that making this list genuinely broke my poor, fragile little heart a little bit because there are some champions that I absolutely love and wanted to include them in the top 10, but I just couldn't quite fit them on. And many of these champions are also my personal favorites. I do not hide the fact that out of all of the classes, science class is my favorite, and... Uh, First disclaimer, obviously, Quake it will not appear on this list because she's not out as a 6-star. We only include champions that are available as 6-stars in this list. And before we get to the top 10, I need to give some honorable mentions. And I do think that Science Class is one of those classes where there are very few bad champions. Even the champions in Science Class are not overly popular. And, you know, I personally don't necessarily love or enjoy often have some very unique characteristics or very viable um, places where they can be used, like Abomination with Red Guardian Synergy can be crazy useful. Red Guardian himself can be super useful. I do wish Kabam gave that guy a little bit of love, increase, increase the duration of his trauma debuff. That would make him so much better. Then we have champions like Spider-Gwen, who has always been one of those champions I kind of want to rank up because I do see a ton of potential. I know she can do amazing things how she has never kind of like made her way into the top of the mainstream but there are some skilled summoners that do amazing things with spider gwen she hulk unfortunately one of my earliest mcoc adorations loves princess fiona herself unfortunately doesn't make this top 10 list and then there are plenty of champions like you know luke cage and uh, wasp and yellow jackets that are definitely very very solid champions in their own right, even though they might not be that close to the top 10 of science class anymore. But most notably, the champions that definitely I wanted to fit on, but I couldn't and or, I, well, I didn't at the end of the day, due to multitude of reasons, is number one would be Anti-Venom. I do think Anti-Venom is coming ahead steadily. He's increasing in his popularity as he's becoming more available. I do think more and more content kind of supports rank up of anti-venom obviously he's a very useful synergy partner to some um, other champions but i do think his kit in his own right is actually very cool very good and i would have loved to fit him in the top 10 list which i didn't this time around i do think there's a decent chance that i will with my next list then we have joe fix it who i did not put in top 10 i know that there are some people who are absolutely sleeping on joe fix it and i know that there are some crazy joe fix it you know advocates and people who enjoy using mr fix it after his buff he's really 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 good there are a few tricks and finicky things about using him but the man can put in work one of my favorite kind of more recent buffs for sure i rank him up very early on after his buff and i do not regret it one bit Some champions that were in top 10 list and are not in there anymore will be Miles Morales. Now, Miles Morales I still love. I think he's an amazing champion, great character to have access to. 
one of the cheese gods of MCOC because whenever it comes to dealing with unblockable, there is none better than Miles. And especially right now, when there are more and more champions that just randomly seem to go unblockable or have unblockable special attacks, Miles is increasing in his overall usability. Uh, at the same time, I unfortunately can say he hasn't necessarily yet had the impact I was hoping for him to have. I do think that, you know, the content releases might not have, you know, elevated uh, or showcased his best qualities as much as, uh, you know, I would have liked. I still think he's an amazing rank up. Absolutely no regrets ranking him up. This time he just didn't quite make it into the top 10. Then besides Miles, another champion that uh, I'm not even going to lie, I'm quite happy to take off top, the top 10 is The Thing. Because The Thing, in my opinion, always started somewhat overhyped. The thing, you know, initially, but for a lot of people was considered to be like the top three, top five science champion when he was released. And I never really valued him as much. Therefore, by a strange, cruel twist of fate, I ended up having to rank my thing to rank three and SIG 200. And then for quite a longer period, I learned how to appreciate the champion for what he is, for what qualities he has. The whole champion cheese with crazy damage, obviously, is a nice additional kind of gimmick to have to be honest i don't really want call of utility because typically you know people just don't do it in kind of like competitive push comes to shove scenarios because it involves with you playing with really really high risk and also dedicating like a full synergy team to him it's just not worth it if there are better alternatives out there however his own abilities do make for a very solid base the bleed and shock immunity the immunity to nullify and armor break Obviously, the safeguards with protection and easy access to unstoppable. There are plenty of good things in his kit. And he is a good champion, but he's by no means a must-have, must-rank champion, in my opinion. The coolest thing about Thing, however, is now that Kabam is getting, you know, a bit more loose, I would say, with some of the nodes and giving opponents incredible numbers of attack via some, you know, combat power, combat uh, strike, counter, uh, power, strike counter fury nodes and a few other places in the game where he can virtually go immortal because opponents have massive modified attacks. Like the champion, I have learned to appreciate him over time, but at the same time, I am fully well aware of all the downsides and weaknesses that come with using Thing as a champion as well. And uh, yeah, I did not place him in top 10 anymore. I just don't think he is as good. I know he's good, I just don't think he's as good as the champions I'm going to mention after this and i uh, don't want to miss anybody out i do think that red hulk is still a great great champion to have access to and have ranked up and obviously there are even more science champions that are extremely promising but let's finally get to the top 10 no actually there's the biggest disclaimer now the biggest disclaimer but the biggest heartbreak i love the piggy the piggy is crazy good and i didn't make didn't put him in top 10 I know, I know, yell at me, I'm a monster. And many people have commented that, you know, oh, you, you rate or emphasize Battlegrounds too heavily in your champion rankings. And I really feel that I don't. Because if I was doing that, I would have put Stark and Spider-Man super high. I would put up plenty of other champions that, you know, either didn't make the top 10 lists or were fairly low in the top 10s, much higher than they would be. And the same thing would be for Pig. If I really based my rankings off Battlegrounds, I would 100% put Pig up there in like top 5. He's just that good in Battlegrounds. He can be annoying to fight against based on what, you know, uh, what nodes there are to supplement his defensive abilities. But most importantly, he's one of the craziest attackers. Bypasses Safeguard, bypasses a ton of different nodes. And then just absolutely tears in the opponents and nukes many, many, many nasty matchups down. He's one of the best Balgrounds attackers. And specifically for Balgrounds, I think pretty much of a must-have type of rank up or attacker. Uh, maybe not for every single meta, but definitely for a whole lot of them. The access to Taunt obviously makes him uh, enable to do these fast-paced fights, which is exactly what you need in Balgrounds. Ability to put on a ton of debuffs on opponent, shuts down their healing. If you run Inequity Mastery, significantly reduces the damage output and now and then obviously there's virtually nobody immune to power stings in the game 
which you can you could kind of argue that magic maybe is but still even with the spell master existing she wouldn't necessarily work all that well against piggy because he would reapply the debuffs so there's pretty much nobody immune to his uh damage distribution and he can nuke champions down if i was rating battlegrounds as one of my primary motivators for champion rankings he would definitely be much higher i do mention battlegrounds however quite frequently because i do put it as a new game mode that is relevant for a ton of players and how they will base their rank of decisions and i do put it more likely about side by side to alliance quest alliance war and you know the challenge modes the you know the hardest story content and stuff like that try to put them on about equal level and then kind of like add the points together in which case you know unfortunately kind of had to leave out the piggy this time around so now spot number 10. spot number 10 is going to go to void now Void is still a fantastic champion there was a time when he was the science's trailblazer the most recognized science champion pretty much unfortunately over time we have had the champions who do the things that void does either without reliance to rng and many of the aspects is more effective now void's biggest downside definitely is the fact that you do kind of have to pray to the god that you get the debuffs that you want when you need them especially when it comes to dealing with the power gain nodes what does have a ton of amazing uses in this game, but we as a player base are fairly spoiled. We don't use the champions that can get the fight down. We always try to use the champions that can get the fight down the fastest, the most consistent, the easiest to make our own lives easier. But there's also the other rationale because the quicker the fights can be finished, the less RNG you rely on these fights the safer they are and the more consistent you can get the results that you want to get and that is one of the problems that have always kind of plagued void slightly with the six star signature stones still being as rare as they are there are a lot of people who just you know would want to have a rank 3 sig 200 void but you can't afford to sig him up when you have alternative choices to make that you think you could benefit from more so that also is one of the reasons why he kind of has slipped down a bit science class does have quite a lot of champions that require high sig and ultimately you have to make the decisions and in 2022 more often than not void is not the champion that wins or comes on top of in that decision making process of which science champion you will give your signature stones to that is definitely one thing that kind of hinders his popularity and it's pointless and silly to say that it isn't there are few other champions in similar position that being said he's still very capable champion he still has that incinerate immunity he can still bypass vast majority of the damage mitigation or immunities and things like that because his damage is not even a damage over time kind of effect it's a passive damage over time stemming from abilities and debuffs so he gets by corner nodes he gets by life cycle stuff he gets bypasses just a ton of annoying things in this game still has extremely high health pool and in kind of like mid to longer fights his damage output is definitely not all that bad trust me guys i know as well because i used five star rank five void in i think the karina challengers abyss run and he did put in a ton of work it's obviously not the type of champions against solo random fights he's not that hard hitting but if you do have him at high sig, as long as you have fear of the void active, you do get a significant attack boost, and then the fight is where it really starts. Now, obviously, you can play void with low sig as well, if you choose to, but I really don't recommend it. In vast majority of the scenarios, you know, rank 5, 5 star sig 200 void is going to be significantly better in virtually every aspect damage speed of the fight control of the fight than you know relatively low sig six star void aside obviously from your health bar uh, on defense obviously that uh, sig ability is quite useless so you can put a unawakened void on defense but still a champion that packs a ton of utility has crazy good power control heal reversal damage over time effects can significantly mit mitigate opponents evade uh, for instance, also reduce their critical rating, which in combination with inequity can make your opponents hit for virtually nothing, uh, which is one of the strategies that I used. But uh, I, I do think that he has kind of, you know, reached his peak and is somewhat on the downslope. 
Now he's still a champion that in the future where you know I would have more Sig stones and where I would have the ability I would like to uh, Sig him up. But I also recognize the fact that there are several other champions that I would prefer to invest before Void. And if you do have to make that choice, unfortunately, then, you know, again, I doubt he's going to come on top. That being said, you can fully understand why people love him. I like him a lot. As I said, I even used my 5 star rank 5 for Karina Challengers run. And uh, whenever you do use Void, he definitely performs. He does exactly what you expect him to do. And uh, that's great. Right, let's move on to spot number nine. Spot number nine is also a slight decrease this time around, and that is going to be iHulk. Now, iHulk is still a phenomenal champion, one of my favorite champions to use. As I said, Kabam could have easily made him one of the top science champions just by adding a few things, just by, for instance, increasing his stun chance based on how many rage stacks you have, just by putting some sort of taunt mechanic again on each individual rage stack to kind of force those special attacks out of the opponent out more or uh, maybe not you know not taunt or maybe that hercules is infuriate they also could have easily have uh, the rage stacks gain kind of like 0.1 second duration for each rage stack that you already have active so they wouldn't immediately all disappear if you miss a parry for instance there are many many tiny small ways how you could make I Hulk, absolutely crazy champion. But guess what? He kind of already is. Even with all those drawbacks that we were very quick to criticize. And yes, there is a somewhat finicky process to kind of ramp him reliably. And it does depend on AI at times. But he does have one of the best nukes in the game. And that is on top of obviously his ability to uh, bypass region rate. Uh, modification which you know is becoming a fairly significant piece of utility in itself then obviously he has access to petrify he has access to combat power rate reduction uh, he has you know guaranteed stun on level two decent stun chance on level three obviously then the immortality itself which uh, ultimately i do think is one of the weaker immortalities in the game just because obviously you kind of have that long cooldown and if you're playing the game right you will be triggering immortality by yourself so i really look at it as less a lot less fail safe of a mechanic but you know kind of m much more kind of like a condition in the fight that you need to be aware of but in general obviously he is helped out by his massive massive health pool he has one of the top five biggest health pools in the game which also was pretty much enough to make him a really annoying pathogenous defender obviously offensively he wasn't the greatest due to the way the point scoring system works but defensively, he still provided quite a lot of problems for a ton of players just by stretching out the time. Uh, and in the rest of the game modes, obviously, he's not the most uh, reliable alliance war attacker either or the most popular alliance quest champion these days. Virtually all of his utility kind of lies in being able to tank through and blitz through uh, story content and any other challenge type mode content. I think in last summer of pain there was buddy lee and a few other youtubers demonstrated just exactly how powerful his ability to nuke down tank down and persevere in the fights is and then on top of it obviously he still turned out to be one of the if not the best option to fight uh, some of the uh, kang boss i think kang the the 7.3 kang boss he was one of the best options and obviously he's just infectiously fun so i do think that it is an appropriate ranking. I do think it is a very valuable asset to how Immortal Hulk ranked up for when your needs uh, for him arise. And again, Immortal Hulk is also one of those champions where if you're quite unsure how to tackle a problem, if you do not have a perfect solution for a boss fight, then he often will be one of your go-to options to just kind of, you know, nuke it down as much as you can and then finish it off with the rest of your team or maybe sink in one revive revive him quickly and finish nuking down the opponent even at the highest of helpful levels you can just get such an incredible damage output from that one level two and then you know kind of like level one follow-ups but it is already quite ridiculous and i do think he needs to be recognized for what he is he's a, just a very huge blunt hammer of a type champion that can tear through so much of the content spot number eight 
Spot number eight is a bit of a gamble. In spot number eight, I'd be, I'd be surprised if he stays at the same ranking. One of the two things are going to happen with Scorpion. One of them, in my opinion, much more likely, but obviously the second one is possible as well. I do believe that uh, either Scorpion is going to decrease in his ranking if he does not somehow manage to land in, you know, with the content that's in the game and put his utilities and crazy, crazy abilities on paper in the game. Keep in mind that he's still subject to balancing. So that's another unknown, another variable that could mess with his abilities. But much more likely, I do kind of half expect him to be story similar to Nimrod, where he comes out, you know, initially maybe not that many people were super impressed. Then quite shortly after, a lot of people are becoming super, super hype about the champion to a point where he becomes one of the kind of like most notable champions in the class. Now, I know that, that those are big shoes to fill, but I do think that Scorpion has virtually all of the things needed for it. If you take a look at the sheer amount of abilities in his kit, it is quite, uh, quite rare, even considering how lengthy ability descriptions Kabam likes to give the champions. Still, the fact that he has access to three different damage over time effects, which you can pre-select before entering the fights, thus you do not have to really mess with it during the fight. You don't have to do any silly rotations or anything. You just choose which way you want to go before the fight and you go and do it. So that makes it much more easy, user friendly. Obviously, he has still the same access to all three of these immunities, also being the first champion to be rapture immune. Then on top of that, he deals damage obviously not just by his damage or time effects and not largely by that he deals damage effectively by powers things that are not even powers things in name those thing debuffs do again give him another very powerful access to a damage source that's effectively nobody's immune to and on top of that yes he do how his sting you know a wade thing which isn't like all that impressive offensively but then you have your Torment debuffs that, again, just let you chuck an additional <laughs> chunk of debuffs. Uh, that's obviously in the manner still uh, synergizing with the Spare Mastery as an additional set of debuffs. He will always put a ton of debuffs on the opponents and uh, increase the duration of your... And basically kind of cascade down by having more of these. You can get more of your damage over time effects, thus having more powerful uh, Sting detonations. On top of that, he has access to taunt which again is very very useful debuff to have one of the most underrated debuffs in the entire game enabling you to have aggressive aggressive fights enabling you to do all or nothing nodes so and so forth and uh, you can also have an unstacking suppression debuff reducing combat power rate in case opponent was somewhat passive then on top of that uh, you can uh, access uh, what else you access to think I, I, I always even forget. Obviously, there, there are the Furies that you have uh, with Scorpion as well. And you have Petrify, I believe, on level 2, which obviously can let you mitigate power gains and enable you to do heal reverse as well in combination with the rest of the debuffs. So he has virtually everything you'd want uh, Science Champion to have. On top of that, he has very high base attack, which is a lot to give in the champion to begin with. And he has literally like the biggest uh, block proficiency, base block proficiency in the game, which uh, makes him an extreme tank. I have seen some incredible gameplay, some insanely fast takedowns from Scorpion, and I do have very huge expectations from this champion. Not gonna lie. I don't think he has necessarily, quote unquote, earned his placement yet, be just because he's very fresh in the game. He's not even in the featured six star crystals yet. So very, very few people have him. So there has been limited expo exposure to this guy. But I do fully believe that he is going to be one of the champions that are at the front of MCOC for, you know, quite a long while. Or alternatively, Kabama are going to rebalance him and he's going to be meh. We'll see what happens. Now, spot number seven is uh, one of the last year's 
success stories that started out again quite underrated one of the things that i like about 2021 science champions i think i mentioned in one of the videos before where all four of the science champions started out somewhat underrated and it took us like half a year a year's time to actually fully appreciate these champions and that is definitely overseer now he has great damage output some fights he does take a bit of a ramp up but if you can trigger his immunities and he's awakened then he can ramp up incredibly quickly and then he can dish out damage like nobody's business on top of that immunity to nullify immunity to poison and uh, access to stun regen disorient taunt again it's just an absolute utility powerhouse and the game mode that helped him show what he already was and how useful he actually is in rest of the game was definitely Balgons because he was one of the most feared champions like uh, especially the more I kind of used him the more got used to him I had uh, he was one of the most frequently banned champions for instance a ton of opponents you know and despite me having multiples of rank 4 champions in my deck and human torches and everything else multiples of my opponents started banning Overseer just because he seemed to absolutely nuke a ton of matchups where you wouldn't necessarily expect him to be particularly great at you know yes again he might have somewhat longer ramp up and you can't benefit from uh, his sig ability where you would trigger the Im immunities and those would give you your gamma charges or if opponent doesn't have some sort of power gain ability but overall he was definitely one of the mvps for the entire series of balgons that we played so far in virtually every single meta his secondary damage bypass safeguard in addition with his very potent disorient that also can get past that his ability to inflict debuffs when opponent throws special attacks also made dealing with masochism quite easy because the masochism was triggered left right and center and over time you would amass permanent debuffs on opponent which with despair would negate any masochism healing at all whatsoever and then obviously he completely doesn't care about power snack because he's nullify immune so and so forth and he was just crazy since then i have noticed actually some moderate use of him in alliance wars in relatively competitive levels I have noticed a ton more use of this guy in kind of like story content and challenge modes and things like that. And uh, overall, yeah, he has increased in value. He has increased in prestige, in my opinion, a ton since the last ranking. He has obviously also some defensive capabilities that can make him somewhat annoying to fight. Access again to disorient, taunt, stun is just crazy useful. And then the damage. <laughs> So yeah, I do think that Overseer is uh, gaining much, much, much more respect in the game uh, as time goes by, and uh, I'm all here for it. I, I'm still going to tease him as the hipster maestro that, you know, likes uh, $20 uh, Starbucks mocha latte frappuccinos and uh, then sits in Starbucks writing a very shit screenplay in his flip-flops and man bun and you know complaining on twitter that he's unable to afford rent for his apartment in la even though he's spending 30 dollars on a coffee or something that is what kind of image i do have from overseer obviously probably smells of pot but that doesn't take away that he's a phenomenal champion and one of my you know more recent uh i'm, I'm not gonna say discoveries but definitely a champion that has is growing on me more and more and uh, it's just proves himself time and time again and spot number six is actually a slight increase from the last uh, list as well and spot number six i'm gonna give it to immortal abomination immortal abomination definitely kind of proved to me the things that i was doubting in him and uh again part of it came through balagons part of it came through alliance war now and uh, his capabilities there obviously there are several things that i'm not particular fan of immortal abomination for instance his abysmal offensive stats and virtually no offensive capability up until the point when you do reach that level two and only then you can start dealing damage which the end result is you know immortal abominations damage is quite a bit worse than a lot of people realize in short to medium level fights but it is you know decent good enough in kind of like medium to longer level fights uh it, it is like you know almost kind of like perfect duration i think for the fights that you'd take in Balgrounds and slightly longer than that, that would also include then by extension Act 7 and uh, Act 8.1 based on beta. 
Uh, obviously, his damage is significantly limited to poisons, even though he does have a level 3, which can bypass, uh, you know, that poison immunity, and you can still place the toxic or an opponent and do some extra damage that way, which can be quite useful. But then on top of that, he, again, in my opinion, is very well-balanced champion that does a great job. Now, the one thing that I disagree with that he's particularly Liquid Courage double-edged friendly in fact, in reality, unless you like run max coagulate, um, typically in shorter fights, you still always end up with a net health loss. You need to have at least a medium to long level fight where you can have this guy be liquid courage double edge recoil friendly. But even that, if you are being super aggressive with spamming your level once and get after like 12 poisons, then your willpower healing is virtually non existent because even though he does take less reduction from poison debuffs in his regeneration he does take that reduction so this in my opinion should have been ability that's much more similar to eye hulk where oh sorry not eye hulk but omega um, sentinel where he just doesn't get any reduction from the poisons uh, but <clears throat> that grievance put aside he's still obviously an amazing champion uh, ability to inflict a ton of weaknesses and poisons, thus having always plenty of debuffs on opponent on top of his petrifies that he can access to while level 1 is great. And uh, then in general, the fact that uh, whilst he has Toxic Aura active, he also is effectively unblockable, can let him get uh, many kind of like quicker openings and enable him to be more aggressive than he normally would be. I do think he's absolutely great champion. I have started enjoying him more on a personal level as well as and in addition to that I have definitely noticed uh, him making more impact to more different game modes. He's more present in Alliance Wars I think. Obviously he was present in Battlegrounds. He's uh, more used in you know general day-to-day -day stuff. Potentially even Alliance quests. And moving on spot number five. Spot number five is still the same as it was before which is Mr. Negative. And I do think that he's going from strength to strength to strength. The only stumble that Mr. Negative has taken thus far has been uh, Mystic Dispersion Global Tactic in Alliance War, <clears throat> which does make him harder to use, which is kind of like ironic considering that he, you know, deals with Mystic Dispersion Mastery extremely well. He deals with all the nullification abilities, everything else, but he doesn't have anything that would bypass Miss. And also, whenever you do remove buffs with his own ability that still does trigger the Mystic Dispersion, Alliance War Defensive Tactic, thus making him harder to use. Therefore, his usage in Alliance Wars has declined, opposed to him, you know, being more usable with Unstoppable Armor. So we're going to see how he deals with the Conduit uh, Defensive Tactic when it comes. I do think he's going to be very, very great for that. But uh, we're going to have to see. However. Virtually in every game mode, he provides answers to hard and heavy fights. He is not necessarily a champion that you want to bring in just to kind of, you know, clear a quest uh, and use him as your, you know, general daily driver to kind of like noob down your daily quests or stuff like that. He is a champion that will deal with a ton of very hard, tricky, complicated fights. Obviously, he is arguably the champion in the game that deals the best with degeneration. Because whenever you do suffer from degeneration, which more champions have access to right now and more nodes do employ, therefore this ability also increases in value in itself. If awakened, he gains a very potent regeneration buff. On top of that, per each unique debuff that you have on the opponent, you reduce the degeneration potency by 40%, which effectively makes him pretty much immortal in a ton of degeneration matchups and then on top of it all immunity to nullify stagger and fate seals again is becoming more and more important in my opinion completely bypass buffet power snack and a bunch of mystic champion abilities ability to trigger evade and also intercept on demand is absolutely awesome my favorite party piece uh would come because of his uh dark energy combat power rate reduction uh, because when you put on delirious uh, upon delirious an opponent, you reduce their defensive combat power rate by sixty percent, which in effect typically enables you to get to your level two before the opponent has had a chance to use their level one, which is one of the key abilities of Mister Negative in a ton of uh, critical fights where you can get the degen going, where you can place that petrifying Doctor Doom before he can use his level one, for instance. 
so and so forth. So I do think that has a ton of potency. Now, unfortunately, I do think Mr. Negative also has plenty of abilities that kind of seem wasted. For instance, that level one bulwark, you know, level one virtually seems kind of far too underwhelming in most circumstances to be actually used because it completely ruins your uh, standard strategy plan of finishing fights. Also, his level three regeneration and burst of direct damage are not all that potent to ever be worthwhile to be used. Uh, so he is a pretty much a strict level two champion. Otherwise, he will feel somewhat underwhelming in his base damage. Uh, but in any fight where you can use your level twos, obviously his damage output, Im you know, immediately comes back up to a very, very acceptable level. And those degens put in a ton of work. Then the fact that he's a science champion that has on-demand access to fury buffs is also quite unique, which I do enjoy a lot. And also the ability to get rid of any buffs on you that put, could potentially be harmful during the fight is quite cool. I love that. Uh, it's underrated kit of utility. And yeah, and then obviously his sig ability giving him increased energy resistance and also ability to do, deal some physical damage. That physical damage is largely defensive ability though for most part. But still, uh, all of that kit coming together makes for a very, very unique champion. One of the best looking champion in the game, but definitely a champion that can be described with a very simple summary of a problem solver. He's a champion that solves a lot of very hard puzzles with a mixture of his immunities and quirky, unique ways of dealing damage. And, uh, you know, again, ability to reach his level two before the opponent, reducing opponent's combat power rate getting rid of any unwanted buffs on you, so on and so forth. Absolutely love the guy. And obviously, again, yet uh, one of the best, if not the best, DJ counter in the game. Spot number four is a champion who is sliding down, unfortunately, in his usability scale. I'm still keeping Captain America Infinity War in the fourth spot, but uh, Captain Infinity War still kind of suffers from the similar thing that I did describe with Void. Where Cap is the champion that you want to get the SIG 200, and you want to do it quite badly. With virtually all of the other champions they mentioned, like Overseer, higher SIG the better, but it isn't super required at 200, I would say. I-Bomb, again, you know, more SIG the better, but it isn't absolute must-have. You can have SIG 20, I-Bomb, and he's still going to be amazing. Uh, Mr. Negative, similar, you know, higher SIG the better, but he doesn't need to have SIG 200. And then we have like Scorpion, who I don't think is particularly SIG reliant, and I Hulk, who doesn't need his SIG at all. Captain America Infinity War, unfortunately, absolutely has to be SIG 200 to kind of be super reliable, in my opinion, especially if you ever plan to use that skill ability to shrug off debuffs, for instance. So that alone kind of definitely slowed him down with how pricey and hard to come by science just on top. However, as I said, these rankings are based on overall impact on the game and why built in the game. And Captain America Infinity War is still a champion that can very easily be used in Alliance War due to his tankiness, due to his ability to deal with Unstoppable very easily, uh, which is again a buff that Kabam seems to love to spam pretty much everywhere. Then his ability to reduce opponent's defensive ability accuracy by 100% on his level 1. And also, whenever he glances, glances opponent's attacks, enables him to occasionally bypass some frust uh, frustrating nodes. And then the full customizability. I think for a progressing player, obviously you're never going to have a 6-star SIG 200 Cap Infinity War. But if you do get a 5-star Cap Infinity War, and if you're relatively new in the game, then he enables you to do so much content by himself. And he's going to let you do so many troublesome fights. Overall, the fact that you can customize his kit based on what you need to gain access to petrify to gain access to armor break to gain access to weakness debuffs or give him some of the most potent purification abilities in the game is extremely huge even unawakened obviously he's still a very very good champion that can deal with unstoppable that is an absolute tank and uh as a complete package obviously he has potent class synergies that is uh definitely strengthening you know your uh specifically i would say tech class is the most useful one but also mutant class can be quite useful in addition to cosmic one 
but overall he's just one of those champions that no matter where you turn your head to you kind of have to respect him again he can be easily used in alliance quests and alliance wars he's never going to be particularly great battlegrounds champion um in my opinion just because he's not necessarily the fastest when it comes to direct damage and without a synergy team but that mode put aside you know when story content challenge game modes he's just incredibly good i do think that at the moment a lot of new players who, who are starting the game who didn't necessarily experience the peak of this champion will automatically be underestimating cap but he's an absolute monster you can trust me on that and again i do think overall maybe not necessarily from the most competitive standpoint uh, because i do think he's he has a ton of value even at a competitive standpoint hence his ranking because i do kind of i'm fairly top tier player kind of mirror is what i try to create with these rankings but uh, especially for newer players, this is one of the most impactful champions you can acquire relatively early on if you can seek him up, in my opinion. And even for the top tier players, still an incredible powerhouse of the champion. Be that Act 6, be that Act 7, be that a whole bunch of variants, be that monthly stuff, be that uh, whatever you need. Also arguably the best and most powerful heal reversal. His Petrify... It's nowhere near as potent as voids or many others in the game but the fact that it comes often in addition with like three or now even four other debuffs and uh you know the spare mastery exists then whenever you parry the opponent you know twice and they immediately get their heal reversed incredibly quickly without actually you having to land a hit i do think he actually has the quickest and the most effective heal reversal when set up properly which is always fun time Additional note that I did want to mention in terms of cap was uh, the release of Sam Wilson, which gave him a fairly unusual access to stagger. Now, Anti-Venom also quite unusually has stagger mechanic as a science champion, but uh, gaining stagger due to this Captain America Sam Wilson synergy definitely just adds another layer to how useful he can become, which is amazing to see in my opinion. I love when they do that to champions that are awesome as is, but you know are becoming slightly older so yeah spot number four spot number three is going to be spider-man 2099 and i do have some pet peeves or some gripes to pick with spider-man 2099 because i do believe that uh, again he has gone over points where when he got released he got completely underestimated including by me absolutely no shame to admit that uh then immediately he got celebrated like the greatest thing ever in the existence and i disagree with that i think he's crazy good for a ton of stuff in alliance war specifically but i think that outside of alliance war there is virtually no other place where you really really have to depend on it do i think he's the best questing champion absolutely not do i think he's the champion that you would want to use in alliance quest absolutely not do i think he's an amazing battlegrounds champion definitely not because despite what everybody else tries to say about him he's kind of like base damage output and damage output in kind of like a regular fight is below average even though his utilities might be really useful even in his perfect matchups as i mentioned before like against man thing you know i was never afraid to place man thing as my defender if opponent was going to use spider-man 2099 why because i knew they're going to take their sweet time taking down that man thing and if there was some sort of man thing mirror match, for instance, Mr. Negative always outpaced Spider-Man 2099 by a significant margin. All of those things put aside, I'm not saying his damage is completely awful. If you do play him perfectly, if you stack plenty of debuffs, have those physical vulnerabilities active, all of that does lead to, you know, a respectable damage output. He definitely is nowhere close to kind of like high damage dealing champion. You know, that level two burst does look quite nice, but in vast vast majority of scenarios unless you have like 25 <laughs> raptures stacked an opponent it's not going to do that much therefore by extension i do think that for his damage output his signature ability and having him at sig 200 is really important or as close to 200 as possible that does help with it but it doesn't still even at sig 200 he isn't the hardest hitting champion in my opinion all that being put aside as i have mentioned many times in the past Champion doesn't have to do a million things extremely well to be extremely valuable. And I remember that. And again, 
I am fine with Spider-Man being the way he is. He does have his alliance war, where he is crazy good, taking a ton of different matchups, one of the kind of more utility, um, you know, one of the widest applicable sets of utilities is what he has. Obviously, whenever you deal with true strike node, which you have to do every alliance war, he basically becomes four times tanky and uh, put on Liquid Cottage Double Edge, which he normally sucks with. But if you do deal with True Strike Node, then obviously you get like a permanent healing going for you. And uh, he just gains so much. He's much, 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 much more tankier all of a sudden. He, he has permanent regen throughout the fight. And you can settle in for a relatively long boss fight, but extremely, extremely safe boss fight. There are tons of things to like about him, 100%, specifically in context of Lion's War. In questing, in hard scenarios, I don't think he's that great. I think he has plenty of uses. I just don't think that he's a must-have for, you know, Act 7, Act 8, or any of the variants, or, you know, Eternity of Pain and things like that. I do think that he can find his uses, but I do think in most cases there's probably going to be somebody who can arguably be better. Yeah, as I mentioned, he definitely isn't your Lion's Quest champion. Definitely is going to be your Balagrons champion. But the best thing about him is what he does, he's that dominant in it doesn't need to be amazing for everything wherever he is amazing he's just that much better safer apl more applicable and obviously then when you do synergize him up with anti-venom that does improve his kind of like startup speed <laughs> damage of the starting line because you start with the wither it also improves his uh versatility because you can be much safer when dealing and getting to uh you know first level two you don't need to worry about opponent's power gain at all anymore he does have arguably the most potent power gain reversal in the game and obviously with the set of all the other debuffs it's just crazy useful and uh very powerful champion just not for everything and just not for everyone and that is perfectly fine spot number two i think is a champion that I personally think uh, prescribes to somewhat of an oppose, opposite approach, where he shines virtually everywhere. <laughs> he is super tanky. His damage is, in fact, underrated by, you know, if you put on Mr. Fantastic right next to Sp uh, Spider-Man 2099, Mr. Fantastic is in smoke Spider-Man 2099 in virtually every fight. And uh, his damage is significantly better. Then on top of it all, obviously, all of his utility, combat power rate manipulation, very potent petrify that is not RNG dependent, and uh, increased combat power rate if you have him at significant awakened level, can be very, very potent. Increased physical and energy resistance, <laughs> sometimes annoying, but uh, also very protective away. You can get up to pretty much 100% away in right matchups, which, you know, is just making him pretty much immortal. Uh, he also increases attack for each debuff, which synergizes quite well with his abilities and some other nodes in the game. And yeah, he went from being a very popular support champion to being an absolute stud in his own right. Again, going through all the sets of the game mode, I do think that he's a champion that's uh, relatively easy to be used in Alliance Quest. I do think he's a champion that is absolutely destroying Alliance Wars currently. I do think that uh, he's a champion that is great in battlegrounds, defensively as much as offensively. And uh, I do think that he is one of the quote unquote, problem solvers in the entire game. Personally, for me, the most annoying thing about Mr. Fantastic is just having to apply all of his pre-fights before every fight. It gets old and it gets fast, therefore you don't really want to use him as your daily driver questing champion. But uh, virtually with everything else, an absolute powerhouse of a champion. There are obvious situations where other champions, science champions, will be better. For instance, he doesn't deal the best with masochism. He does shine in any matches where he can freely parry and heavy, which isn't that big of a deal or problem anymore these days. But uh, definitely, without doubt, uh, also has very potent synergies, can turn any science champion into a champion with access to power stink, synergizes with some of the most potent champions in the game, and can you know significantly improve the fighting conditions for any of his teammates 
giving any champion in the game access to petrify is already such a huge thing so yeah i do think that uh he was one of those champions that absolutely did not need a buff to be already good champion but with the kabam's ability tune up increasing his debuff duration increasing you know his stats and uh making his rest of the abilities more powerful it just became an absolute scientific powerhouse I know that a lot of people still underestimate him just because they can't see one big yellow number on him or something like that. But uh, trust me. Number one, his damage output in any medium to longer level fight is very high. Number two, his utility is insane. And uh, a lot of it comes from sources that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Like uh, the fact that he reduces opponent's special attack damage by... 25% I believe, lowers their attack rating of each hit by 25%. So when you have three of those active, you lower the special attack damage by 75%. In addition to, for instance, if you have inequity whilst running him, in addition to the rest of the abilities, it just becomes an absolute noodle of a special attack where you can just tank them to the face if need be and take hardly any damage with his resistances and everything else. And the guys crazy insane and he does not need any synergies despite what many people think that you need him to have full fantastic four set or something absolutely not crazy good champion and then moving on spot number one i don't this video already is longer <laughs> than even i thought it would be but spot number one is going to be human torch and with human torch you don't need a lot of proof i don't need to explain exactly what he does only thing that I need to tell you guys is that uh, there is a very good reason why he's banned in virtually every alliance war. There is very good reason why he's virtually an automatic ban in battlegrounds. And that's it. You know, if that doesn't indicate that a champion is very, very, very powerful, then I don't know what will. Obviously, I have to say a few more words, but. Uh, the thing that does make him exceptional, indeed exceptional, is the no flame. Is the fact that, you know, for one fight in the quest, which often is all you need, you can virtually eliminate the weakness that most champions have. And virtually any champion that relies on damage or time effects always has. Is the opposing champion immunities or shrug of abilities. The fact that they are passives means nobody can shrug it off. The fact that they are not incinerates or classed as incinerates means that there's absolutely nobody with immunity to it and that means that he can fight with virtually any champion unless there are some other abilities that you know directly prevent that like their own damage or time effects or something and uh with kabam releasing more champions in mystic class with kabam releasing more and more champions with access to energy attacks thus creating them perfect matchups for human torch quite telling if i'm gonna change again to the next screen and we're gonna see that uh if we filter out 2022 20, champions uh then plenty of them do have energy attacks i think we have already three mystic champions that obviously all are a food for um human torch then we have omega sentinel who does have energy attacks not entirely sure about Captain America Sam Wilson. I do think his level 2 probably is energy attacks. And then we have, you know, some champions who don't. But the fact that there are ever-increasing numbers that he can absolutely nuke down is just helping. Again, energy attacks. Why not? <laughs> energy attacks. Energy attacks. Energy attacks. You know, he just gets more and more and more targets to nuke down as well. Because obviously, you know, Human Torch, without no flames in an average matchup, even with no flames in a matchup where opponents do not have any type of energy attacks, he isn't really that exceptional. He can make that matchup work, but unless you can get more smolders built up relatively quickly, he's not going to be the best champion. What makes him so special is that he's an insane champion in any matchups where you do make his smolders go off. And that that is Human Torch. Again. I could have finished this quicker just by sticking to the there is a very good reason why he gets banned in war why he gets banned in polygons you know very well that typically when you see opponent having human torch on their side means that you're probably gonna lose one round 
most likely. Virtually automatic ban for everybody that I know that play this competitively and for myself included. That's how terrifying it can be. Right, that's it. And uh, man, I got carried away now, but I regret nothing. Science class is my favorite class. It's only natural that they get extra 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'm sorry. No, not really. Again, I regret nothing. Uh, right. So here's the new list. Human Dodge still the first. Captain America Infinity War slid down to fourth. Mr. Fantastic Spider-Man 2099 as a result got moved up to second and third. Mr. Negative is kind of like the middle zone that hasn't changed. And then Void got relegated to 10th. Immortal Abomination moved up from 9th to 6th. Overseer is a new addition and Scorpion is a new addition in this list. And uh, I Hulk slid down two positions as well. Uh, just because of the game content that has been released largely. Here we are. Those are my rankings. Let me know if you like them. Let me know if you don't. Who am I kidding? All of you are going to tell me exactly what you find wrong with them. But hey, that's part of the fun. I'll see you guys next time. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the 